morning what is up you do you stop stop what you're doing okay stop it right now smash the like button drop the coffee drop the baby drop the wifey drop the whatever you have drop your phone actually pick it up smash that like button baby push us up in the old algorithm and what is up youtube welcome back to the my crypto journey live stream here for coffee and crypto on a beautiful thursday day baby i've had this nasty cold and it is kicking my ass i haven't had a cold this bad in a long time but we're here baby let's get it now yesterday was actually pretty big for the cryptocurrency uh markets in all markets in general look at these big ass green bubbles baby it feels like the start of a run but i say not so fast baby we still have a very important day on valentine's day which a lot of you all don't have valentine's so you'll be here to get the news because y'all ain't got nothing going on anyways right uh and we're gonna go to cover the CPI data. That's going to be very, very important. But first, let's give a shout out to our sponsors. Of course, Volt Inu. Guys, later on, I'm going to be going on Ladybug Crypto's YouTube channel to do a Volted live stream. And of course, Volt is leading the charge when it comes to price action today. Cookies Protocol did an AMA with them last week. And they have some more stuff coming out. A big kind of raffle uh, and lottery thing for their holders. And, of course, our newest sponsor, Pomeranian. Yes, the cute little dog you see in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. The new Palm in town. Links to everything is in the description down below. We're going to be having an AMA next week, so make sure you tune in for that. I will keep you guys updated. And, of course, hashtag ad. These are my sponsors. This is not investing advice. Just make sure you, you give them a little bit of a look, right, if you're into that sort of thing. And, guys... You know how we do it here. We start the news at the five-minute mark, and we, we spend the first five minutes greeting the chat. How are you guys doing? What's up? How are you guys doing? What up, babies? What up, babies? We have, who do we have in the chat already? We got, you guys are chatty this morning. We got James Minton. What's up, baby? We have Ace Hole Crypto, A Shiba Mooning. Really? Okay. We have Javi. What's up, Javi? How you doing? Thank you so much, Javi. I'm glad you liked the tectonic video. A lot of people didn't really like it, but what's up, Jay Hawk, Mizzy Matt? What's up, baby? What's up, Matthew? Yes, Matthew, if you change your name too much, YouTube will banish you to the Shadow Realm. Well, not banish you, but you won't be able to change it back. Change it back. What's up, Joshua? Yeah, we'll talk about Charlie Munger, uh, Bill Gates. Not Bill Gates, but excuse me, uh, Warren Buffett, and then Ray Dalio here soon. What's up, Boomer? How you doing, bud? What's up, baby? What's up, what's up, what's up? Sacco Hunt. Somebody speak to my manager. What's up, Gay? What's up, Chris E? <laughs> what's up, Racket Club? What's up, baby? Uh, what's up, uh, who we got? Boomer effing sooner. What's up, baby? Crypto high. Ben, what's up, baby? How you doing? How you doing? Kamal, what's up, Robert? Good morning from Arizona. Ooh, is it hot over there still? Static. What's up, germs? How you doing, baby? What's up? What's up? What's up? How you doing? How you doing? Fitting crypto. Cooling Chris. What's up, baby? Cooling Chris. I did get your DM. I'm gonna hit you up after the stream. And I do appreciate that, man. Uh, Juice Man, what's up, baby? Jason, what's up? What's up, Eric? How you doing? Mizzy Matt. Oh, we got a new member on the channel. Welcome to the Degenerates again. That eggplant looks oh so nice next to your name. Welcome to the pit. And guys, the poll of the day is actually what the hell is the poll of the day? I actually forgot. What is the poll of the day? Uh, I'm glad you guys are liking the poll of the day. I've noticed that a lot of people are really digging the, the poll of the day, too. We have 89 people watching. Let's go, baby. Uh, is the recession canceled? And we have 69% so far say no, which is nice, right? So is the recession canceled? What do you guys think? Um, we have Reese, Reese S. What's up, baby? How you doing? How you doing? Fang, good morning. Thomas Weekly, good morning. How you doing? Working, but you got your loud, <laughs> working, but got your loud mouth in the background. Absolutely right. Let's go, baby. Hey, man, let's uh, start the morning off right. And uh, if you guys are not following me on Twitter and Instagram, links to my Twitter is in the description down below, and links to my Instagram is also in the description down below. And I also have another channel for dating and relationships. If you're into that, it's also in the description down below. But um, on Twitter, you know, I ask people, do you guys need caffeine in the morning? Because look, if I don't have caffeine, I'm fighting somebody. You know, I'm fighting somebody. So. Yeah, bull trap, bull trap. We'll see what happens, right? We'll see what happens. I mean, the most important day is coming up on Valentine's Day. That's really important because we're going to see the CPI data. And the sentiment I'm getting from people, it's like, well, we're getting this data, but everyday Americans seem to be struggling more and more. You know, it's different when you're in it. You know, you're in it. It feels like everyday Americans are struggling more and more, right? What's up, John Wick? How you doing? John Wick, been watching you on Instagram, man. You're freaking, uh, your you're conceal uh, stuff where you're, you know, drawing your weapon is actually pretty crazy. What's up, Cobra Commander? All right. So, guys, we know 
we've got some more fun. Here's the thing, guys. Yesterday, of course, the Federal Reserve spoke, right? And Jer- <coughs> excuse me, Jerome Powell seemed to be happy. He seemed to be like seemed to be pretty positive. Everyone felt like he was positive, and that's a kind of a a, a change in tone that we haven't seen in quite a while, which is very, very interesting, you know? A lot of people are like, wow, he seems like, you know, maybe there's this, either the recession is going to be either canceled or it's going to be less of a recession than we thought, right? Now, here's the thing. He said all these things, but uh, February is going to be the big day, right? It's going to be the big day to tell whether or not we're actually handling inflation, right? And I'm watching some channels and they want to move the target inflation rate from 2% to like 4%. And I don't think that's I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's right. I don't think it's going to happen, right? We have to do what we have to do to get inflation under control. And I just think that this next year we're going to it's going to be it's going to be a lot of pain. That's what I think. I mean, who knows, right? Maybe we're going to keep sending to the moon. Maybe Bitcoin's going to stay around here for the rest of the year. This may be the bottom or maybe close to the bottom. Who knows? But what I do know is that boy, it does feel good to see these big ass green bubbles and the positive sentiment on Twitter and just all over social media. And right when it seems like we're getting some damn good news, we have these big figures in our society coming out and just fudding crypto. For uh, Let's talk about Charlie Munger, right? Now, he says uh, pretty much he wants to ban cryptocurrency like China did. Now, if you guys don't know, last year, China put out a ban on cryptocurrency You see, January 1st, 2022. And this is one of the big things that started the last dump of the entire cryptocurrency market after we had that insane rally to $69,000, right? That's what really, uh, this, with a few other things, right, what really started to bring it down because China, one of the biggest countries, banning cryptocurrency. Well, why did China ban cryptocurrency? Well, they did it under the, uh, hey man, it's used for illegal activities. So that's the, an argument we see a lot. And, you know, here's the thing. Cryptocurrency during its inception was very synonymous with the dark web, right? The Silk Road, the guy who's in jail serving two life sentences who created the Silk Road. So, you know, crypto has always been synonymous with scams, right? And buying drugs on the internet and those and buying credit cards and all and people sometimes, right? Crazy things you can get on the dark web. So, yeah. Why? Because cryptocurrency is anonymous. It's truly decentralized. No one controls them. It controls it. It's anonymous, right? So China banned cryptocurrency last year. And then Charlie Munger's coming out, right? And of course, this is the Berk- Berkshire Hathaway guy, right? I mean, he's ancient. What we should really do is ban them damn nose hairs. I don't know if you guys saw my freaking thumbnail, but you see the nose hairs? I'm like, okay, men, if you got nose hairs, shave those things, okay? Shave them. Right. But this guy's coming out saying we should ban cryptocurrency. So, of course, Cointelegraph put out an article that said community. <clears throat> excuse me. Got massive cold. Community mocks Charlie Munger for his obsession with China's Bitcoin ban. Why do we got to do everything China does? Right. OK. So the cryptocurrency community has ridiculed well-known Bitcoin critic Charlie Munger, vice chairman of Berkshire Hathaway, for calling the United States to fall in the footsteps of China and ban crypto. Why are you trying to take away our fund, Charlie? Why are you trying to take away our fun? Guys, keep in mind, people like Warren Buffett have been very vocal. Like these old guys, right? These these Pepsi investors, right? These, these Pepsi investors, right? Now, look at these guys are smart. They know what they're doing, obviously. You don't get to where they're at if you don't know what you're doing. But I feel like sometimes you could be out of touch when it comes to some sort of new tech, right? I mean, just because they're good at one thing doesn't mean they're good at everything. But I do respect where they're at and I do respect their status, right? Because you don't get to be a billionaire not being who they are, right? But, you know, people like Warren Buffett have been pretty critical of cryptocurrency too, right? It says, in the op-ed article in the Wall Street Journal, the 99-year-old investment veteran has once again slammed crypto, calling a cryptocurrency calling a cryptocurrency a gambling contract with nearly 100% edge for the house. I think this is a, this is a typo. Calling a cryptocurrency a gambling contract. Okay, calling a cryptocurrency a, yeah, I think he meant calling cryptocurrency a gambling contract with nearly 100% edge on the house. And this is true. If you listen to like the scam king, or sorry, sorry, the moon king and like those weird call channels, right? Obviously, you know, a, a, bu- a bunch of things like when, when it comes to uh, these small cap shit coins that people are just shilling every single day, the ones that are, you know, pop up 24 hours, they promote them, they go away. Like those ones, obviously, right? Um, those, uh, those those projects are literally gambling and it's 100% bet on the house right and the thing what people don't understand about those those cryptocurrency projects that are launched every single day 
is that, you know, most of the wallets that are in on the project are like developers and people that got kind of the, the jump on it, right? And unfortunately, with the creation of those projects, it dilutes the cryptocurrency market. And there's only a few cryptocurrencies that are actually true to the space, right? And so, yes, 99% of these cryptocurrency projects are scams. 100% true, right? So this makes sense. Munger also said that cryptocurrency is not a currency, uh, not a commodity, and not a security, adding that obviously the U.S. should enact a new federal law that would ban crypto. According to Munger, the best way to approach crypto is to follow the example of China, which put the blanket ban on crypto in September 2021. The Berkshire Hathaway vice chairman stated, what, what should the U.S. Uh, do after a ban of cryptocurrency is in place? Well, one more action might make sense. Thank the Chinese communist leader for his splendid example of uncommon sense. <clears throat> the community was quick to react to Munger's latest anti-crypto uh, arguments, with many expressing bewild uh, bewilderment about how measures like China's crypto ban stack up with the United States proclamations that it supports freedom, right? And true. So what does DeFi stand for, right? What does crypto stand for? True decentralization, right? True uh, autonomy. At the same time, the USA wants taxes. I mean, this look at yes, the United States is free, right? Freedom, all that good stuff, right? Obviously. I mean, some people would argue that we're less free than other times, but I would argue against that, right? Um, but there's one thing that's always been constant in the United States, which is taxes, right? There's always taxes. And so, you know, the United States government wants to find a way to tax everything, right? And so uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, cryptocurrency, they just can't let it be exactly what it wants to be. They have to do some sort of regulation on it, right? They have to, right? That's why they shut down Tornado Cash abruptly because they don't want you hiding your transactions. Yes, you, you can blame it on North Korea. You can blame it on all the hacks, but they're doing this because they want you know, their piece of the pot. You know, you're not going to be able to make $100,000, $200,000 without giving Uncle Sam his fair share. So Charlie Munger, you know, here's the thing. Unfortunately, I think that people don't, that are not in crypto don't understand the different parts of crypto. And they understand that there are some cryptocurrencies <clears throat> that are here just for a good time and not a long time. There's a ton of those. In fact, most cryptocurrency projects, the vast majority are that. But there are some, like Bitcoin, that are actually a good thing, right? A good thing. So when you, when you see people like Charlie Munger come out and, and, and have a blanket statement all over cryptocurrency, it's not fair because not all cryptocurrency is the same. In fact, I think only some of it's actually a currency and others, I think, are a security and are like shares in a company, right? It feels that way. You know, these people are offering these pre-sales so people can get in and they're promising some sort of return, right? And I understand where the SEC is coming from, but not everything in cryptocurrency is like what he's describing, right? So this Bitcoin, or excuse me, this billionaire, 99-year-old, fucking living, right? Uh, you know, it's pretty much fighting cryptocurrency, you know? And, and you see this a lot with the old guard, right? You see this a lot with the old guard. There are some people that are a little older, like the Kevin O'Leary's, the, uh, um, the um, uh, what's, the, what's the other guy's name from Shark Tank? Uh, the Mark Cubans of the world who are older, not old, right? But older, who really love cryptocurrency, who champion cryptocurrency. Um, but, you know, they're not looking too good either right now, right? Because when you promote something that goes down, I mean, it doesn't look good for you. And guys, do me a favor. Smash that like button. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, Rorschach, an actual CPA, says, Munger is old money. He doesn't understand what the next generation of investors are looking for. There was a time where a person... Uh, per Personalis, personless, uh, personalis banking was laughed at, uh, was laughed at a system. Look at it now. Uh, what do you mean by that? Um, is that mean like not going to the banking, uh, going to the actual bank? What does that mean? Um, but I mean, look at everything with new technology. Look at everything that was like fought against and like is now a common thing. Like we see this all the time. Can you imagine like the first car? People like riding horses, like that's fucking stupid, or you know, whatever, you know what I mean. Or first, anything, right? The first of anything, uh, a lot of people don't accept it until it's already here. And and you do see a lot of people, uh, older people, for example, that see something new and just don't really understand it. Yes, he's ninety nine years old. Yeah, okay, ATMs and computer access. Yeah, I mean that's that that's crazy, you know. So you meant person less, right? So two words. Yeah. So, hey man, you know. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's different. Right. Um, so, you know, it, it, you know, it's like AI, right. Chat GPT, maybe cell phones, anything, right. Internet really 
like storing death, excuse me, <laughs> storing death. I was reading this comment. Uh, Brad says there's no, there's, there's actually two constants, Rodney death, not just taxes. Yeah. So death and taxes are always a content, but um, there's, there's been all kinds of things, right? Um, you know, what about the internet storing data uh, instead of on, 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 you know, on a computer instead of having physical paperwork. Now, I know some companies now have both, but before imagine like all big businesses moving from actual paper to the internet, right? Mail to email. Like, you know, like I'm sure some people were against that. Like, oh no, you know, that, that's not how to do it because all these, especially the, the inception of the internet, like there were so many scams or uh, viruses that went around that would destroy businesses, right? Remember like the I love you scam or the I love you virus? Where you'd open like a uh, like a love note from a secret admirer, and then it would like destroy all your documents, and it cost the uh, companies billions of dollars. Uh, good morning, uh, Roger. How you doing? So we have this fud from a Charlie Munger. Now, not only do we have fud from Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett, uh, Ray Dalio said something about Bitcoin, and people are criticizing him today. And this is not really FUD for, it's kind of like FUD for Bitcoin, but it's kind of like an argument for Bitcoin. Let's see what this man has to say. Uh, uh, curious, crypto curious. Okay. Where, where, where do, yeah, has anything changed for you? In uh, that? Um, uh, uh, yeah, just to everybody, well, let me state what I believe about <laughs> uh, crypto and with um, Bitcoin and what I've, uh, you know. Oh, boy, was having a seizure or having a, uh, uh, he was uh, <laughs> having a stroke right there, right? Pretty much uh, always, but I think it's been, you know, quite amazing that for 12 years it's accomplished this, but I think it has no relation to anything, okay? In other words, it moves, it has no relation, it's a tiny thing that gets a disproportionate attention. You know? So if it has no relation to anything, what would you say about cash, right? Does, it, does cash have any relation to anything? You know, the value of crypto, uh, crypto. Uh, Bitcoin is less than a third of the value of Microsoft stock. You could go into industries, but right. biotech and many other industries are more interesting than Bitcoin. It's not going to be an effective money. It's not an effective storeholder of wealth. It's not an effective medium of exchange. So you don't think uh, Bitcoin's an effective store of value? I think the reason why Bitcoin's effective store of value is because you can't, it's finite, right? You can't really manipulate it. It's not, it's not centralized. You know, you can't really make more of it. Right. And we have a timeline when the last one's going to be mined. But we but it does have a point with some cryptocurrencies, right, because you can mint a bunch like FTX and SBF were minting FTT tokens. So there is some truth to what he's saying. Right. Are in a world in which money, as we know it, is in jeopardy. Right. We are printing too much. And mm -hmm. it's not just the United States, all the reserve currencies, the year, what's going on in Euroland what's going on in yen. And so in that world, the question is, what is money and how's that going to operate? So when we look at something like China's RMB, and then you take the digital RMB, um, I think you're going to see that become more and more a thing. So when, when things start to open up in an evolutionary way, people are going to start to say, where is my safe uh, storehold of wealth? And as you have China denominate more of its trade in RMB, then naturally, uh, those who are going to hold RMB, if Saudi Arabia sells oil in RMB and then buys things from China in RMB, when they get it, they're going to hold more RMB. It's going to be a higher percentage of their. And so um, I think the question over the next uh, number of years is really what is money, not just as a medium of exchange, but a storehold of right. wealth. That sounds like a argument for. Bitcoin, of Bitcoin or for some of digital currency. Bitcoin? Yeah. Uh, no, maybe. I think if you, want a, if you want a digital currency, you have to deal something different. I don't think that the stable oh, no. coins are good uh, 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 because <laughs> then you're getting a fiat currency again. I think that what you really would, what would be best is an inflation linked um, coin. Right. Another That's interesting, right? An inflation linked coin. That's actually pretty interesting, right? Uh, what's an inflation linked coin? Well, it's an, a coin that would follow the inflation rate, right? Uh, depending on what the inflation rate is, you know, maybe CPI data would dictate that, like how much that coin is worth. That's interesting, right? Instead of having to print and, and take money out of circulation and print more money. and take, It's like, maybe that's the answer. That's interesting. But is it a CBDC? Uh, no, 
I would not like that, right? No one likes CBDCs because it's too controlled by the government. Like, it's too controlled, right? Crazy. In other words, something where basically you would say, okay, this is going to give me buying power because every individual wants, what do they want? They want to secure their buying power, mm -hmm. if, right. if you want to save. Now, if you put it in Bitcoin, it goes like this. <laughs> Who knows what happens? Right. If you put it into something, the closest to, thing to that is an inflation index bond and so on. But if you put, uh, if you created a coin that says, okay, this is buying power that I know I could save in and put my money in um, over a period of time and then I can transact in anywhere, I think that that would be a good coin. But you, so I think you're going to see probably the development of coins that you haven't seen that probably will be, end up being attractive, uh, viable coins. I don't think Bitcoin is it. So what he what he's talking about obviously is CBDCs, right? Which are, which are central bank digital currencies. Which to me, it's like the it's it's like the world seeing cryptocurrency become more popular and digital currencies be more popular. But the difference is that we are sent, we're decentralized and they want to make it centralized, right? And that's the issue is because why is cryptocurrency so appealing to people? It's because it's decentralized. Like we don't want a central bank digital currency, but maybe central bank digital currencies are not just the answer to cryptocurrency. It's not the government saying, hey, look over here. We stop, forget about Bitcoin, XRP, forget about those things. Come, come take our currency, right? Maybe it's the answer to inflation maybe it's the answer to having to print actual dollars right now the issue with that in my opinion is it's like at least holding cash you know even though you don't want to keep cash under your mattress why because as time goes on that dollar becomes less and if it's not in some account where it's earning interest or investing or anything like that you're not going to keep up with the rate of inflation right but it's still some sort of hedge against a tyrannical government, right? A government that says, hey, you're accused of this. We're freezing all your assets, all your accounts, and now you can't do anything. But if you have cash, if that scenario would have happened, well, you could still move you know, somewhat freely and kind of, quote unquote, decentralized because I know some money is marked with just cash, right? So interesting argument. I, I don't think he's wrong because a lot of crypto does look like a scam. But I think, I think a lot of these guys that are outside of cryptocurrency don't really know like the small details. And I think that when people learn like little details of it, of exactly how uh, cryptocurrency is and how they're not all the same, like Dogecoin isn't an Ethereum and Ethereum is not a Bitcoin and those sorts of things. I think that if they understood that they would actually be a little more pro cryptocurrency because Bitcoin, I think is the answer to a lot of things. You know, it's just my opinion. I could be wrong. What do I know? I'm just a YouTuber, but it feels that way, right? Bitcoin is the answer when you look at the money, the, the the issue we have with printing too much money and hyperinflation and how hyperinflation really is the destroyer of all great nations. Now, you know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. Do you think that this guy has a point? Do you think he's wrong? Interessante, right? Interessante, you know, interesting. And uh, yeah, the, here's the thing, uh, you know, with Bitcoin, it, so when re when regulation happens, because some people like regulation, some people don't. I think that some regulation is good. Why? Why do I think some regulation is good? Because I know how to navigate like Uniswap and decentralized exchanges. And I understand the risk that is involved with aping into poopy buddy new. But a lot of people don't. They just think, you know, they're, they're literally people don't understand that these a lot of these products are just here to make a quick buck, you know. And th that's okay. Those products are okay. It's okay to go to a call channel, right? It's okay to go to a shiller who's going to shill you some token. But you have to understand, you have to understand that a lot of those products are just here for a good time, not a long time, right? Very, very important, right? Very, very important. So, um, you know, so some regulation is needed, some hand holding is needed. But I mean, who knows, right? Who knows? It's going to be interesting to see what regulation has to offer us. But, uh, <laughs> right? It's going to be very, very interesting, right? Very, very interesting. Uh, Chris E says he is right. If if talk about inflation is why crypto exists, then his plan is great. Make a coin that track money printing as a security product. Chris E, I mean, he talked about the bonds that do that, right? Um, but I I thought that was a great. I was like, oh, make a currency that keeps up with the rate of inflation. Yeah, is that an algorithm? You know, it, you know, or is it does someone manually do that? Um, is it just 2% because the healthy rate? So my question is, okay, well, and we kind of fuck with inflation, right? Because we print way too damn much money during the pandemic. And that's why we have inflation right now. Well, if the healthy, if, if healthy, 
is 2% every single year, well then does that does that crypto or maybe digital currency is just 2% every single year? That's very interesting. I think it's an interesting angle. Yes, do me a favor, smash that like button, baby. Smash the like button. Let's go. That's a tips bond, especially you are looking for a coin that acts the same. Essentially, okay, essentially you're looking, yeah, yeah, 100%. Oh, Rodney, you big, strong man. Shut up, Cobra Commander. I do taxes for free, says people putting a price tag on Bitcoin. Fiat is what makes it centralized. Even if Bitcoin goes to zero, you can still use the protocol. That's what it's programmed to do. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's why the blockchain, it's like, it's immutable, right? It's just, it's just there. It exists. You know? That's like the, uh, that, that was the case for like metaverses, right? Because you have a few different metaverses, right? You have the metaverse decentralized on the blockchain and you have the metaverse like for a company for example video games right we'll talk about video games because pretty much the metaverse is video games you have the metaverse like on decentraland or sandbox right or these other metaverses that are supposed to be truly decentralized um so for example if you know the sandbox goes under or these companies go under you could still use it i mean your 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 skin or your house or your character is on the blockchain it'll never go away on the contrary, if you are, you know, because what is a metaverse? A metaverse is a place, virtual reality usually, right, where you're represented by an avatar. Well, what is that? That's the Call of Duty lobby. That's the Halo lobby. That's Fortnite, right? That's World of Warcraft, right? Those are metaverses, essentially. We think of metaverse with the Oculus, but that's not the definition. It's just a virtual world where you're represented with an avatar, right? Now, if Blizzard, which owns World of Warcraft, or whoever owns Fortnite, if those companies were to go to were, were to go down, well, everything you have in that metaverse is gone forever. It's not immutable, right? So that's the difference between the metaverse when it comes to web, you know, uh, web 3.0 versus the actual, you know, typical web, you could say. So that's the difference between those metaverses. So that's the difference between decentralized and centralized. Like no one really controls it, right? And if it is controlled, they're controlled by a DAO. But DAOs are, you know, shady too. Here's the thing with DAOs in crypto. It's like, okay, decentralized autonomous organization, which means the people decide. Like, no one decides. But usually the DAOs are weighted heavily on who holds most of said crypto, you know? So you could be a billionaire in it, you know what I mean? It could be kind of crazy. You know what I mean? It's crazy. It's crazy. You know what I mean? How about that? How about you take a seat there? It's time to panic by. Take you and your Saitama out of here. Boy, how about that? <clears throat> All right, let's get to the next story here. And let's hear from our man, Clear Value Tax. And what was his reaction to the Federal Reserve? Now, Jerome seemed kind of happy. He seemed kind of like, okay, there's a clear, you know, there's a clear kind of, uh, you know, solution in sight. Are we getting inflation under control? What does Clear Value think about this situation? Reserve has raised interest rates again today by 0.25%, so 25 basis points. I want to update you on what happened today, what the Federal Reserve did, and what they say that they're going to do. So, of course, this all ties in with inflation, unemployment, and the economy. <clears throat> the Federal Reserve released a policy statement right after their meeting. The statement says... Inflation has eased somewhat, but remains elevated. The committee seeks to achieve an inflation rate of 2% over the long run. The committee anticipates that... And that's what we just talked about, right? 2% over the long run. Maybe a crypto, maybe a crypto, uh, yeah, or maybe a digital currency keeps that same rate, right? Ongoing increases in the target range will be appropriate in order to attain a stance of monetary policy that is sufficiently restrictive. In addition... The committee will continue reducing its holdings of treasury securities and agency debt and MBS. So that was their official statement. This all just means that they're sticking with their goal of bringing inflation back down to 2%. Which is good because I'm, I was hearing from a lot of people that, oh, what's up, Blockchain Betty? Welcome. I've been hearing from a lot of people that, no, we should just change the rate to 4%. It's like, I don't think that's a good idea. Why don't we just get it back down to 2%? Why are we so quick, you know, to... Uh, you know, change the target inflation rate. Well, it's because some, well, one is because we have a national debt, right? And we got to keep raising the debt ceiling. You know what I mean? We're just spending money like crazy. Um, but a lot of people want us to get to a different target inflation rate so things can be better again. But, you know, that just makes the problem worse down the road, right? The Fed, they're going to continue raising interest rates and they will continue with quantitative tightening. 
Okay, so we have CPI inflation at 6.5%. So that's so that's what the rate was in December. We're going to see the January inflation rate. So that's going to be released on February 14th. That's going to be big. It's on Valentine's Day. So now, honestly, I'm concerned about this January inflation report because, I mean, I don't know if you've been paying attention, but gasoline prices have been going up all throughout January. Commodity prices have been going up as well. Food prices... They're Eggs. continuing to go up and the labor market, it still remains tight. So this is like the bad, this, this could be bad, right? And, you know, in 12 days, if we get a CPI data, that's bad. Well, then what is the federal reserve going to have to do? They're going to have to get more brutal. Maybe we don't have more to uh, 25 interest rates left. You know what I mean? To, to, to 25 basis points hikes left. Maybe we have more, right? And that would dunk the market, right? Let's continue. So we'll get the inflation update on February 14th. I I do not, so I'm not saying that inflation, the rate of inflation is going to go up. However, I think that it's going to be more difficult for the rate of inflation to come down and buy big jumps down. So especially in the 5% range. I believe that Powell, so Jerome Powell has that same concern. In terms of the Federal Reserve continuing to raise interest rates, the Fed is expected to raise interest rates two more times. So the next time is going to be on March 22nd and then on May 3rd. They're expected to raise interest rates by 0.25% on each one of those dates, each one of those meetings. So that would get the Fed funds interest rates to 5% to 5.25%. The market is expecting the Fed to stop raising interest rates after that March 22nd meeting. So quantitative tightening, that's still in effect. If you don't know what QT is, so quantitative tightening, that's the opposite of money printing. So the Federal Reserve, they're letting their balance sheet shrink. They're unwinding their treasuries and their other debt instruments. So now at the press conference, Jay Powell, he gave his prepared remarks. Powell warned about the lag effect. So he talked about this pretty quickly. He said that the full effects of the interest rate increases that were done last year have not been fully felt by the economy yet. So they're working their way through the system. Powell says that it's encouraging to see inflation coming down, but that there's still more work to be done. Powell said that the housing market is softening, business investment is weakening. However, he pointed out that the labor market is still holding strong. Powell said that the job gains have remained robust and that wage growth is still at elevated levels. So what do you guys think about the, the labor market? H how are you guys doing in the comments? Do you guys know people around you getting laid off? I've had a few friends get laid off, uh, but they uh, two of them got jobs right away um, in their field. Um, how is that affecting you guys? Are you guys getting fired? Are you guys looking for another job? How is that working for you? So Paul said that while recent signs are encouraging, that they continue their, they're, they're going to have to continue their tough stance on inflation with the restrictive monetary policy. That's because, well, Powell said it. He doesn't want inflation to become entrenched. Powell said that ongoing interest rate increases will be appropriate to get inflation back down to 2%. After Powell's prepared remarks, the session had opened up for Q&A. So I thought that there were there were a lot of good questions being asked that gave us information about the about the future decisions of the Federal Reserve. So someone asked about how financial conditions have been, I mean, they've been really loosening up in the past few days. Powell said that the Federal Reserve will take that into consideration, and that's why they're saying that ongoing interest rate increases will be appropriate. Another reporter asked about unemployment, the unemployment situation. That's because the Federal Reserve, they've been saying, they've been saying this for a while. They've been saying that the unemployment rates, it needs to go up substantially. We're at 3.5%. They're saying that it needs to go to at least 4.5% to bring the labor market back into balance. So they're saying that because if businesses and employers are still fighting over employees, then the only way to attract them, the primary, the primary way to attract them is to pay people more money, pay employees more money, and you get wage inflation. Obviously, that's working against, you know, the Federal Reserve's fight against inflation. So that's why they, they've been saying that unemployment needs to rise and meaningfully. So the reporter asked, 
if the slowdown in inflation has changed the Fed's opinion on unemployment, their opinion that the unemployment rate needs to rise meaningfully. Powell said that, yes, that would be the optimal case, that we get this inflation while maintaining a strong labor market. So now I want to clarify on the further interest rate increases. So Powell did say that there's more work to be done. So a reporter wanted confirmation that there would indeed be two more interest rate increases, that we would get the Fed funds rate to 5.25%. That's because that's what, that's what the Fed said back in December. Powell responded with, they're going to update the assessment at their next meeting. So they want to they want to make data-dependent decisions, as Apollo said. So their next meeting is on March 22nd. Therefore, the inflation reports that we're going to get for January and February, those are going to be very critical in their decision, which is going to be made on March 22nd. Now, another reporter asked, why not stop the interest rate increases here? Why do we have to keep on raising interest rates? Is that necessary? Powell answered by saying that inflation is still running hot. Powell said that goods inflation has come down. However, inflation on services has not been coming down. So Powell said that it's still an ongoing battle and therefore more interest rate increases are necessary. Now, somebody asked when the Fed will pivot. So they're basically asking when the Federal Reserve is going to cut interest rates. So Powell said that if the economy is not in pain in 2023, then the Fed will not pivot in 2023. So that basically means that if we don't get a recession, then they're not going to cut interest rates until 2024. If we do have a recession and it's not a mild one, then the Fed, yes, then they would be more inclined to cut interest rates in 2023. Additionally, Powell said that this type of environments it's not like the other business cycles that we've seen in recent years. He said that inflation could possibly fall back down to 2% without having a severe economic downturn. Powell said that that scenario, it's not the most likely outcome, but there's still a chance of that happening. So basically Powell's saying that he still has hope of a soft landing or a mild recession. The debt ceiling. So that was brought up. So I'm going to be making a video on the debt ceiling. I'm going to go deeper into that topic. But I'll just say that. So what Powell said, it was not surprising to me. Powell said that Congress must raise the debt ceiling. Obviously. He said there's only one way forward. That is for Congress to raise the debt ceiling. Any deviations from that path would be highly risky. No one should assume that the Fed can protect the economy from that fallout. Now, let me tell you what I saw. So I saw Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve. They had a very upbeat tone. And that's important, right? An upbeat tone, right? And that's something that's kind of been missing um, from the last few meetings. And Because Jay, Jay Powell, look at Jerome is not good at hiding his emotions. He has a terrible poker face, right? But this time it's like, oh, okay, well, he seems a little happy. Unless he's really good at just pretending to be a doomer, right? He's, so Powell seems very comfortable that inflation has been falling from 9.1%, that was back in June, to 6.5% in December. I believe that the Fed went with 0.25%, so instead of 0.5%, because they do not want to over-tighten financial conditions. So yes, there is a lag effect. I definitely agree with Powell on that one. The interest rate increases that they previously done. I believe that that's going to run its course, and we're really going to see that in Q1 and Q2 of this year. So Powell said that we have not seen the full effects of that because of the lag effect hit the economy. So again, I think he's right, and I think that we're going to really see the economy hurting in Q1 and Q2. So of course, certain sectors like real estate, you know, they're more interest rate sensitive, and they're seeing the pain you know, more quickly compared to other industries. Pretty much the interest rate hikes haven't really affected the market as like they should, right? Because it's lagging, right? But there are some industries, obviously, like the real estate market, which obviously is all interest rate based, right? That are being affected. You know, it's crazy. We had uh, the crypto hour. First of all, if you guys are not familiar with the crypto hour, we go live Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time over on uh, Twitter. 
Um, we talked about this sort of thing yesterday. And, you know, a lot of people, so it depends. So right now is a buyer's market for people who want homes if you're paying in cash, right? But if you're paying, if, if you're taking out loans and those sorts of things to buy a house, then this market's not the best market to get in because interest rates were absolutely insane. We're on the flip side during the pandemic, interest rates were dirt cheap. But houses maybe were a little more expensive, right? So it's weird how that turn, that that shift, that, that that tide has changed. But I've had a few friends who bought houses. Now I don't know if they paid for them outright, but knowing them, I don't think they did. And uh, a lot of people are buying houses right now, which is kind of crazy to me uh, because interest rates are insane. And uh, even with good credit, right, like prime, I don't know, prime credit, you know, like excellent credit. Um, Interest rates for homes are still very, very, even with VA loans, right? They're still very, very uh, kind of abnormally high. So interesting. Interesting to see that. So I believe that we're going to see inflation getting stickier, especially when when we're down in the 5% range. So we can go further in depth you know, on that topic in a separate video. So that's going to be very important because that'll be the mapping out of the timeline of the Fed pivots. So it appears that Yes, I do agree with the consensus that there's going to be two more interest rate increases in March and in May. It is expected with a very high probability that each one of those increases will be 0.25%. So I'm going to be making a separate video on the Federal Reserve and the Fed pivot, which is going to be very helpful, especially to stock market investors. So please subscribe. Please look out for that video. Thank you so much. And I wish you a very nice day. Please take care. Awesome. So, of course, we got our main man, CVT, keeping us in the loop. I am part of his Patreon. Very, very good information there. It, it actually making me want to get in more traditional finance world. Um, and, and, yeah, so we'll see what happens, guys. But the 14th is going to be a big day. And to keep in mind that, you know, the reason why the market's pumping right now is because we have some good sentiment from the you know Federal Reserve yesterday. It feels like things are heading in the right direction. Does that mean we're going to send? Does this mean this year is going to be a crazy bull run? No, but does that mean it doesn't mean that the worst is over? Not necessarily, but it feels good to have this positive sentiment right now. You know, although we see all the FUD, the, the Charlie Mungers of the world, the, the the old guard, you could say they don't like cryptocurrency. There's a lot of FUD with cryptocurrency. I just think that the United States obviously sees a future with cryptocurrency, but what they're trying to do is trying to regulate it so they can get their, you know, the piece of the pie, right? Awesome. Austin brought up a good point yesterday. And he talked about like marijuana, like and, and stuff and it's other drugs, right? Well, I, I guess marijuana, but making it legal has been good for some local economies because they're able to tax the absolute shit out of it. Right. It's so they tax it so much that people are still, you know, illegally traffic trafficking marijuana because it's cheaper to get it off somebody on the street. But if you're buying it legally, it's taxed like a MF, right? And let me tell you guys, for all you veterans out there, most veteran, most marijuana places give you a veterans discount, right? So very, very interesting to see. It's like, hey, man, like we can't really stop it. Let's legalize it. Let's tax it. And we'll take our fair share of it. And then we'll move on. Right. So that's why I feel like what's, ha what's happening with cryptocurrency. So that's why the markets are running, because yesterday was a good day for us. Right now, we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. I'm not so bullish on things continuing to rise. I'm not so bullish on a 40K Bitcoin like a lot of people are saying. The only reasoning I can see like Bitcoin, maybe going up to $40,000. Because here's the thing. Some people say Bitcoin should have never pumped to $69,000. The only reason why I did that is because the government printed too much money and there was too much money in circulation and people had the money, right? It was artificial. It wasn't organic. But then I hear the, another argument that's saying, well, Bitcoin shouldn't be, <coughs> Bitcoin shouldn't be below $40,000. And the only reason it's below $40,000 was because of the, crash of the Terra Luna, right? Terra Luna, Bitcoin was trading around $39,000 before the crash of Terra Luna, which dunked it down to like $29,000. And then what else brought down the cryptocurrency markets? Well, the collapse of, you know, three hours capital, Celsius, Voyager. And then lastly, the, the final the knife in the stomach was FTX, right? So those things dumped the entire cryptocurrency market at a faster pace. And those are the black swan events, right? So that's a very interesting perspective. So we'll see what happens. Is this the true pr price for Bitcoin? Or are we going to go lower? I think it's going to be going lower, right? But who knows? I don't know. You don't know. No one knows. Let's see what happens. And the best thing we could do is just dollar cost average, right? Dollar cost average. Uh, Hitoshi, no, I didn't end up staking. All right. Let's go to this next story. It's a real quick story on Coinbase because they made a, they actually had a pretty uh, big W this morning. And not a lot of people are talking about the W that Coinbase had. So check this out. 
Uh, Coinbase jumps 20% after the federal security uh, suit dismissed. So here are the key points. I'm just going to read the key points. Coinbase shares surge after a Manhattan federal judge dismissed a class action suit against the crypto exchange. Well, what was the suit? The complaint claimed Coinbase engaged in the unregistered sale of offering and offering of securities and had failed to register as a New York state broker dealer. Interesting. The judge ruled that the plaintiff had failed to establish their claim and that Coinbase market marketing efforts did not constitute solicitation. Right now, this is a, an issue we see on a, on a bigger scale with the SEC and other cryptocurrency projects. So a nice little W for Coinbase. Right now, Coinbase has been uh, in the public eye for quite a few things. And most recently, they got in trouble because they weren't doing proper KYC, which is knowing your customer, right? They weren't properly vetting and doing background checks on some of the people that were using their exchange. Now, they were fined $50 million and had to pledge $50 million going forward to beef up their staff, right? Now, they're doing that fine. Uh, but what's crazy is that not beef up the staff, but beef up their vetting process. Now, the interesting thing is, they had to cut 20% of their staff. So how the hell do you beef up you know, your, um, you know, your, your background process when you're cutting 20% of your staff? Is that a different department? How does that work? I don't know. But that's very, very interesting. But Coinbase, I do believe it's the first cryptocurrency exchange, right? I believe it's the first one, right? You guys, you got to watch the documentary. It's a good documentary. Um, I do believe that it is going to be, who knows what's going to happen with Binance is what I'm saying. Operating out of the United States is interesting because regardless of what anybody says, what we do here in the United States dictates what happens around the world, right? This is why, you know, six months ago, eight months ago, you know, the UK, they were printing money over there and they wanted us to print money. But Jerome Powell was like, uh-uh, we ain't printing any money, right? And Coinbase, you know, the fact that it operates in the United States, the fact that it's under, uh, you know, the scrutiny of the biggest regulators in the world, you could say, and, you know, and having to deal with what you have to deal with operating in the United States, I do believe that's a bull case for it. I do believe that it's a it's a reason to use Coinbase. And to be honest, just look at the technology. I don't know about you guys, but how many of you guys use Coinbase and use Binance and any other exchange? To me, Coinbase is the simplest exchange to use. It is easy. It is the most intuitive. I first downloaded Kraken and KuCoin. Confusing, you know, especially Kraken, right? Uh, I did, Then I downloaded Binance and very similar, right? Then Bitmark. Don't even get me started on Bitmark. That shit's confusing as hell, right? Coinbase, super, super intuitive, super easy to use. And over the last couple of years, they made some real big upgrades to the desktop and mobile versions, right? You can do little courses for small amounts of cryptocurrency. Um, they give you cryptocurrency news. They have a nice little segment on each cryptocurrency project that is listed on their exchange. They have charts for cryptocurrency that's not even on their exchange yet, but you can still view them, right? Um, and to me, it's just very, to me, it's like a Robin Hood of cryptocurrency exchanges. Now, Robin Hood, of course, has bad publicity because they did some shady shit, but I'm talking about the, the, the ease of use, right? It's like, I have a Robin Hood account and a Weeble account. It's like, it's night and day difference when it comes to what's easier to use. So I think Coinbase has a very, very bright future and it's looking really good. And I, and I do like using Coinbase. Now, I don't trust cryptocurrency exchanges at all. Until there's some sort of insurances, I'm not going to leave a large amount of cryptocurrency on an exchange because it's just too risky to me. <clears throat> but if I had to trust one, I'm going to go with one that's operating out of the country I live in, which is Murica. Shout out to Crypto King. What do you guys think about all this? <laughs> Tyra says, I'm looking at my accounts and my meme coins are outperforming my really good use case coins. Go figure. That's the beauty of uh, meme coins, Tyra. It's because, you know, the the first of all we we made a good point yesterday on the crypto hour on twitter first of all follow me on twitter links in the description follow me on instagram links in the description um we talked about how how the what do you trust because if you're a blue chip snob and you bought terra luna right you bought celsius voyager or any a, a bunch of other cryptocurrencies that went under maybe solana i mean those motherfuckers tanked you know they tanked are ru completely rugged so it's like well <clears throat> What is the difference between me getting rug pulled by a shitcoin project that just launched yesterday? What's the difference, you, you would ask? And that, that's, that's a clear point because the effect that those large-scale rug pulls have had on the market, way bigger than any meme coin. 
because it's every everybody sees it. It's in the public eye. It's big. It's, it's bigger market caps, right? So when they go under, it's way more devastating, you know. And the power of those small cap altcoins is that yes, a lot of them you're you're gonna lose your money, but when they X, right? When they X, they're gonna hundred X. They're gonna thousand X. They're not gonna five X. They're not gonna ten X. They're gonna fucking send. And that's where you make the life changing money. And that's why I know a lot of you guys, you know, you have a lot of money in safer blue chips. You could say. And then you have a few moon bags here and there because all it takes is for one to just go stupid. All, one, just one. If you have a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks or a couple thousand bucks in one, all it takes is for one to do some crazy X for you to make an insane amount of money. It's just finding those. It's so hard, right? Uh, yes, Javi, I am still buying VVS. I'm still buying, I'll, I'll probably have it today, Javi. I'm just, see, here's the issue, Javi. So if you guys don't know, I'm doing a little crow chain uh, experiment. So I have a little crow chain wallet, DeFi wallet with some, uh, uh, I might have to wait Javi until, uh, the CPI data comes out Thursday. Cause I want to buy at the best possible discount. And I do believe it's going to be a doom, doomer ass day, Javi. So we may have to put it off. We'll see. I mean, I thought that we were going to dump yesterday. Didn't happen. Um, I think we might dump on, on the, on the, the 14th. We'll see what happens. And I'm going to also uh, buy the dip on some tectonic too. Now keep in mind guys. The crow chain stuff is experimental. That that shit can rug tomorrow. The crow chain could not be popular at all. But it's it's a fun experiment in DeFi. These are my moon bags. These are my small cap risky plays that I want to X me to, to make me a ton of money. So blockchain says it's a lot easier to see the whole picture when you venture into other markets. I follow the real estate market and, and currency exchanges. 100 percent right. You know, the thing about crypt cryptocurrency is yes, it's it's been a hedge against inflation. You could say in a 10-year, 11-year time period. Fine. But not the last two, three years, right? <clears throat> Chrissy says, Coinbase are really doing great. They actually give SC notice ahead of time for a new product to check if it's breaking a security act law. That's why we like Coinbase, right? It feels safe. <clears throat> I'm going to skip some of these. Sarah says, I almost exclusively buy meme coins. You know, Sarah, there's a... there look, Meme coins... You know, it, it's not fair to compare meme coins to Shiba Inu and Doge. It's not fair, in my opinion, because those are the exception, not the rule. Um, they're the, of course, Shiba Inu is the, the meme tokens that everyone loves. They made it out. Of course, Dogecoin was the kind of spearhead for the, you could say, the the meme coin space in general. But Shiba Inu is like literally the project. Of every shit coin in the world, uh, 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 they um kind of copy their business model. They do the same things they're doing, right? Um. Which is pretty much all the use case in crypto in one, except for a store of value, which is a swap. You could stake it, more tokens, their own layer one, right? All these sorts of things, right? A play to earn game, right? The same bullshit NFTs that every other cryptocurrency project has. But meme coins, man, they have power in them. That's why I do have a lot of meme coins. You know what I mean? Uh. Yeah, Crypto King says that's the mistake people uh, make. People make. They look at the hedge against inflation in a one to two year time frame. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, crypto. You know, uh, crypto king. When you look at cryptocurrency, you know, since its inception, what 2011? When was Bitcoin made? 2011, right? Something like that. Um, yeah. I mean, if you go back, obviously, you know, a ten thousand dollar investment into Bitcoin in 2011 is going to be ten thousand dollars in a bank account in 2011. But does ten thousand dollars in a bank account beat Bitcoin? You know, in a two year time frame? Yeah. Right. If you put ten thousand dollar in a one year time frame, right? If you put ten thousand dollars in a bank account one year ago, you know what's inflation right now? What's six point five? That's that's where you're at, right? You look at Bitcoin, uh, you know it's you know it's down what a year today forty two percent. So you know half your money's gone. So it depends what time frame you're looking at. So it, it's it's kind of hard to. It's like cryptocurrency was a new industry a long time ago, and now it's starting to become normal. So now I think we should start looking at how much of a hedge against inflation it really is you know so it's a currency right it's a currency when the dollar is strong cryptocurrency is not right horse soda says rodney can shiba inu hit five dollars here's the or excuse me five is that uh zero zero five here's the thing uh no not anytime soon because it doesn't make sense not that i don't want it to i would like it to why so how many zeros is it, away? is it away? One, two. So you would need to get rid of two zeros for Shiba Inu to hit that. So it, it wouldn't make any sense. It, the, the market cap would be too, too high. 
unless we went on this insane super cycle, Shiba Inu is not going to hit that much. There's too much supply. You know, the total supplies right here and the circulating supplies right here. So what would they have to do? Massive burns. But market cap, look at price doesn't really matter. You got to look at market caps. Price is okay. The one cent dream, the dollar dream, those sorts of things, they don't really make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense for it to happen. Um, you know, that's what I'm looking at because, you know, you look at these, uh, you know, she being into one cent or, you know, something, something to $1 or one cent. Like it's fun. It's, it's nice and dandy. It's like the, it's, it's like the Terra Luna weirdos, right? Like you go to like the crazy Terra Luna people and they're like, oh, it's going to hit a dollar. It's like, that's stupid. It makes no sense because the market cap's already a billion dollars. It's like, if that hit fucking one cent, I can, I can see if this market cap was like, I don't know, a thousand dollars or $10,000. And yeah, of course, maybe, but this insane, right? And the way you get price is you, um, you get, uh, you get, I think it's, uh, our market cap is price times circulating supply. And that's how you get the market cap, right? So if you multiply this price by the current circulating supply, not the max supply, the circulating supply, you get the market cap, right? So yeah, it, it, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. You know, but I like a lot of people try to sell people the, the Shiba Inu dream. All right. Next and last topic. <laughs> this is kind of crazy to me. Check this out. Mark Wahlberg to produce a documentary on the relationship between SBF and Binance CEO. What? Already? So obviously Mark Wahlberg jumping on the uh hype now if you guys don't know gala games apparently is working with mark Wahlberg and you know for some stuff too but that's interesting so they have a pretty interesting relationship and we're not going to get into this really really because it's going to go over the background of ftx and stuff like that but here's the thing on s b f c z c okay here's the thing is it an action movie <laughs> no um yeah, yeah, you got those mouth breathers talking about SHIB. It's because that's their community, SHIB. You can't – see, the thing about, like, d dedicating your whole brand to one uh, one crypto is that it's great because you get a community, but if you say one thing bad, they will come for your ass. They will, they will get you. Um, okay, so the thing about the relationship between SBF and uh, CZ is pretty interesting because think of where SBF was at, right? SBF, of course, Alameda Research, they had their own trading firm, and then, he, you know, Wanted to come to crypto and make a cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, CZ was a big investor in FTX from the jump. He wanted he wanted to help SBF. Now, what happened? How did the relationship deteriorate? It got so bad that CZ said, you know, we're selling all of our FTT tokens publicly. What happened? Well, over time, we saw the connections that SBF had with regulators, right, and, and very important people. Um, and political party members, we saw that kind of come to surface. And what happened is that SBF kind of turned into something that DeFi hates, which is a kind of crony for the government, you could say, or you could say one of the government cronies or a person that's in bed with regulators. I mean, this guy was whining and dining regulators, right? This guy was giving millions of dollars to politicians to, so to, to get some laws that are pat, that could pass, allegedly, to help FTX, right? And that pretty much goes against what DeFi is now some people say well hey cz is that he's a he created a centralized exchange that's not DeFi. <clears throat> he's central he's centralization yeah okay i get i understand that but it's different right cz still isn't like that he's not in bed with politicians now of course sbf is an american citizen cz is a canadian citizen now you guys think he's from china he's not from china he's canadian right he's chinese canadian right um okay at least I believe. I, I'm pretty sure CZ's Canadian. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Let me just double check that so I don't. I don't get the freaking CZ Binance birth. I'm pretty sure he's Canadian. Uh, who? Blah, 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 blah. Let me just make sure. I don't want to. Okay, okay. Bitch. Okay, let's do CZ Wikipedia. I don't want to get this wrong because the fuck. As a, it's it's Shenzhen Pao. Okay. Uh, uh, early life born in. Oh, in, okay. No, he was born. Okay. Wait, what? Okay, he's born in China. Okay, in the eighties when he was so. In the late eighties, he when he moved he moved to. Okay, so he moved to Canada when he was twelve. Okay, so born in China, 
moved to uh, um, ca- uh, moved to Canada when he was 12. Okay, so I want to make sure I got that right. Okay, so but he's a Canadian citizen, maybe dual citizenship. Okay, so over time we saw them start to become competitors, right? Very obviously competitors. Now for a while, when it came to the top cryptocurrency exchange in the space, it was one. Binance, two FTX, and three Coinbase. And two and three between uh, FTX and Coinbase would kind of go back and forth depending on the day, right? Of course, if you guys don't know, CoinMarketCap has this cool little uh, thing where they talk about exchanges and pretty much they rate exchanges by exchange score. And before FTX went under, it was always kind of dirtling around here, right? <clears throat> so they were kind of, you know, started off, CZ started as an investor in the beginning. And then, you know, uh, later on in life, uh, or later on down the road, we saw that FTX uh, be kind of came competitors. Now, obviously, uh, CZ was an early investor in uh, FTX, right? And later on down the road, um, Sam, Sam Bankman Freed pretty much bought out the, uh, uh, CZ's share in the company because he didn't really want him to have that much control. And it only got to about $500 million of FTT token, right? Now, SBF started to say things behind uh CZ's back. He started to pretty much, you know, say, hey, this guy's a, you know, maybe a Chinese. He's not even an American citizen. He's from China. You know, he's Canadian, dual citizenship, right? So pretty much talk shit about CZ, you know, behind their back. Like, hey, man, this guy can't even get into the United States. Like, he's, he's doing all kinds of shady shit overseas. So uh, CZ started to hear some sort of, hear those sort of things. <clears throat> now, we didn't really know about that <clears throat> until CZ made a public tweet saying, I'm tired of like pretty much essentially saying, like, I'm tired of pretending like we're okay and we're not okay, right? There's beef with us pretty much and those sorts of things. And then Almeida's research's balance sheet got leaked, right? And pretty much showed to the world that FTX and Almeida Research are doing shady shit with customer funds, right? Now, people knew about that. And then CZ later on down the road pretty much said publicly that I'm selling all my FTT tokens because they're doing shady shit essentially, which caused a run on the bank with FTX and which caused the downfall, right? Now, SBF, before the downfall, F, uh, SBF and Caroline Ellison said, hey, man, we'll buy all your shares for $22, right? And uh, uh, SBF said, okay, you can do what you want. You can sell. Okay, we're going to be fine, right? Now, of course, we know that they weren't fine. A couple of days of radio silence. We didn't hear from SBF. Uh, fucking everything was on fire. CZ made an offer to help out and buy out FTX. Okay, so everyone thought, okay, FTX is saved. But we know that these guys were beefing. But CZ with the ultimate power move says, how about this? I'll buy your exchange from you. you know, power move, right? I'll buy that exchange from you. How about that, huh? Like how like much of your pride is hurt when someone says that? Like, oh, damn, this guy's helping us. We're bankrupt. We have to sell our exchange to my t- our top enemy, right? It gets worse because CZ says, oh, after doing some probing, we went in there and we looked at your business model and stuff. It's fucked up beyond repair. We're going to have to pass on that. And that's, that was even worse and caused the collapse of FTX to happen even worse. Now, we do know that CZ wasn't just saying that. We had John Ray go in there, right, and, and, and analyze the situation. And he said, too, yeah, this thing is, this, this exchange is jacked up. Nothing was done right. So, to me, this is going to be a very interesting documentary, and I'm here for it. It's interesting how fast they jumped on this, though, because we don't have any resolution for whether or not SPF is going to go to jail. So maybe they're not going to cover that. Maybe they'll just talk about the relationship. But it's going to be a very, very interesting documentary. What do you guys think about that? What do you guys think about it? <clears throat> yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm sick. I have some, I've been taking zinc, Sebastian. I take zinc. I'm just sick. I'm just sick. I'm sick. So I'm down with the sickness. I'm down with the sickness, guys. You know? <laughs> Leave Zach Humphreys alone. <laughs> He's been nice lately. You guys saw my club video? (laughs) 
What do you guys think? Very interesting scenario situation, right? It's kind of crazy. I, I, I'm I'm going to be very interested to see what happens here. But, you know, besides that, guys, you know, cryptocurrency market's looking good. Um, the next two weeks are going to be very, very telling. I'm going to pay very close attention to it. We'll see what happens. I'll make an update on my, uh, uh, I'll make a, uh, my uh, Kronos chain video right now. I'm going to postpone my buy because I think it's probably the best thing to do. Uh, Coinbase, another W, you know, uh, you know, of course, a bunch of old people in our society saying that cryptocurrency is a scam and these sorts of things. Now, it seems like when stuff like that happens, that that's when we have some sort of big, uh, you know, kind of like, uh, kind of, um, um, bad event right cascading event where like the, the cryptocurrency market just dumped so we'll see what happens but anyways guys thank you so much for watching i appreciate y'all have a fantastic day hope i can fill you in with the cryptocurrency news we're gonna be going live on my other channel a little later today so if you guys like dating and relationship all that sort of stuff links to that is in the description down below be on the lookout for some videos and i'll talk to you guys later love y'all appreciate y'all bye-bye